Okay, back here in the uh, the slide that shows us uh, where we're at in the demonstration, uh, we can see in the previous segment what we did was, as Bob, the product owner, we created a new stakeholder requirement, updated the product backlog, and described the highest priority features. So now let's see uh, the next step here. In this next segment, we're now going to go ahead and take the role of Scott, who's the Scrum Master, and go ahead and define the, uh, the sprint goal or our next iteration here and start assigning items uh, to the, uh, the backlog. Uh, and then uh, once we can do that, we can start aligning the, uh, the test cases. So let's go ahead and see how, how Scott goes ahead and, and uh, does these two activities. So let's switch back to the, uh, the demonstration here. And so what Scott will do is he'll go ahead and bring up uh, a web browser and go ahead and log into Rational Team Concert. And much like Bob, uh, Scott also has his dashboard set up to show uh, different aspects of the uh, the current project to, to give him an idea again of, of where we're at. Uh, and again, we can we can see how many uh, story points uh, we were able to do uh, in the previous sprints, and that'll help him uh, define the uh, you know sprint three here. So let's go ahead and, and create that sprint. So I'm going to go here to plans, and we're going to go ahead and create a new plan which is going to be our sprint three here. So we'll call this sprint three. And we'll assign this to the stopwatch development team and go ahead and create the plan. Uh, and the only thing I'll do here as well is, is just uh, we'll add in a description. So the, the uh, goal of the sprint is to add a lap timer. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that off. And now what we want to do is, is actually start assigning uh, stories and, and tasks to, the, uh, uh, to this uh, new sprint. So I can go ahead and just open up in a separate window here. I'll just open this, uh, the, the product backlog in a separate window. And uh, what we'll do is take a look at the, uh, the product backlog here and start assigning things uh, to the, uh, the current iteration. So uh, I can switch a view here. And this kind of just shows me you know what artifacts were assigned to sprint one and sprint two uh, as well as the stuff that's part of the backlog and what we can do is now start assigning uh, items to sprint three so uh, seeing that lap timer control is of the highest priority here and, and one of the main uh, keys we want to do here we'll go ahead and actually assign that to sprint three so I can just go ahead and edit that and uh, what we want to do is assign it to a developer so in this case that'll be Deb and it's now assigned for uh, iteration three. Uh, so just by doing that, we can go ahead, save, and close that. And now what we'll see is that item has now been added uh, to sprint three. And we can see how many total points, so eight total points. So looking at previous iterations, we're able to complete you know, 12 and 15. So we probably want to assign about that much work uh, to this uh, iteration. So uh, a couple other uh, things we'll add in here. Uh, the lap timer button also needs to be completed. Uh, so we'll go ahead and assign that. That's five points. Uh, we'll go ahead and assign that to Deb as well. And uh, sprint three. And uh, also the lap timer display. Uh, so that one here will, is only one point, which is pretty much all we have uh, room left for in this case. We'll assign that to, uh, uh, to Marco in this case. And set it to the current iteration. All right, so now we have uh, a number of stories that we've added here. So the next you know, thing we need to do here is really start to add some development tasks underneath these. Um, so uh, some of those have already been created uh, to save time here. So if we look at the details for the lap timer control, I can go ahead and, and add some, some children tasks that, uh, that have already been created. So we'll go ahead and bring up the details for that, that particular task, um, go to the links here. And we'll go ahead and uh, add to uh, children tasks. So um, I can go ahead and quickly filter to the ones I want. So really, we have two lower level tasks here that I want to go ahead and do. I want to be able to implement the lap timer control and, and model the detailed specification for that. So we'll go ahead and add those two children to the task there. OK. Um, now the other thing we can do is, is add children tasks to the other uh, items as well. And to, to make this a little easier, um, I have a, uh, uh, a query here that will quickly show me all the uh, development tasks that, that have not been assigned to an iteration here. So I can make a quick change here and add these all in. So uh, what I'll do is uh, go ahead and make a multiple change uh, and we'll make sure that these are all assigned now to Sprint 3. 
Okay, and now once that's completed, uh, we can go ahead and uh, go back uh, to our other view here, Sprint 3, and take a look now at uh, all the planned items. So this is a di little bit different view. Here we can see the work breakdown. We see all the, uh, the, the developers uh, or the team members in this case, and now we can start to see what uh, artifacts uh, are assigned to them for this uh, current iteration. And we, have, we can see things such as the, the progress, the overall progress for this iteration as well. Um, so things look good here. Um, another way to, to view this or, or start to assign some work uh, is to take a look at the developer's task board. And the developer's task board is nice because it shows us uh, sort of a view of you know what's to be done, uh, what's currently in progress, and what's already completed. Um, so you know you might the scrum master might actually have this up while while doing a, a scrum meeting, and uh, Deb might tell us, hey, I've already started to uh, to work on. Uh, a couple of these tasks, so we can go ahead and just push these over into uh, uh, in progress. Yeah, so she has two uh, tasks currently in progress, modeling the detailed specification for the, the lap timer control and the button. Okay. Now the other thing we, we want to take a look at here is um, going back to the, uh, the lap timer control story. Uh, as you remember in the previous segment, in the links here, we added a link to the doors requirement. Well, if Scott wants to go ahead and see that, just simply click on that link, and that'll go ahead and automatically bring up doors and take us right to that requirement, uh, so that Scott can uh, can view the the latest details of that particular requirement to see how it um, you know why it's related to this this current work item. And the other thing that we want to do here is uh, in the next segment, you know, Tanuj is going to go ahead and start aligning the test plan. We want to make sure the requirements are tied to that test plan as well. So what Scott can do here is once we take a look at the requirement inside of doors, which you can now see it's, it's highlighted that particular requirement for us, what we can do is push uh, th those requirements over into uh, Rational Quality Manager so that Tanuj can, can quickly connect those up uh, to test cases. You can see some of the uh, test cases have already been tied. So for instance, resetting the stopwatch here, we can see it's tied to a test case in Quality Manager, and the current status of that is that it's passed, the, the actual verdict. So uh, really tying the requirements and the testing together is, is uh, easily done here. So since this lap timer uh, is newly created, I'm going to go ahead and now synchronize that information with Rational Quality Manager. So we can, right from here, go ahead and make sure that uh, the latest uh, changes made to the requirements is now uh, available over in Quality Manager uh, for Tanuj to use in the, uh, the next segment here. So this just takes a moment. We'll, we'll wait for the, um, the synchronization to, uh, to happen here. And um, once that's done, uh, and we'll see later on that when we actually run the testing, we can go ahead and synchronize up the results here. So what we'll do is we'll actually run some test cases, and when we get uh, approval, we can, uh, or the test case verdicts, we can go ahead and bring those back. So here we'll go ahead now and export the test cases. And once we're complete here, we can go ahead and uh, uh, close out of doors for now. And so that's the last thing that, uh, uh, the last thing that Scott really needs to do in this case, except for one more thing, and that is to make sure that uh, all the sprint stories have test cases. So I have a, Scott here has another query to quickly check that. We will run that query. We can see that the three new stories that uh, were added to Sprint, they do not have any test cases associated with them, and that just could be because the Sprint just started. Uh, as we'll see in the next segment, Tanuj will create some test cases and tie it to the lap timer control. Uh, but you know, this could also mean that uh, we have an alignment problem. Uh, so if we were in the middle of the Sprint here and we we ran this query and saw all these uh, stories without test cases tied to them, then we know that, that there's, a, there's an issue here that we need to, to, to align the test plan along with the, uh, uh, the uh, stories that, that we've created. All right, so that does it for, for this segment of Scott. Uh, so let's go ahead now and see how Tanuj uh, aligns the test plan.